Okay, this is the second lecture on the scanning electron microscope. This is the final lecture. Uh, today I will uh, discuss uh, the beam interaction with the sample and uh, then I will discuss also some uh, rustering imaging effect when you scan and that I will sort of make a, into a complex problem that I want you to think about and create a solution for. It's sort of an open question. This one picture that everybody draws when they talk about the electron microscopy, when they think about the interaction with the, with the sample, when you shoot the electrons at it. And that is that you draw an image like this. This is a cross-section view of the image. Uh, I can make a blue pen here for the electron beam. If you shoot the electron here at the sample, the electrons will penetrate into the sample and thereby make some interaction with it. And this interaction will occur in a small volume of the interior of the sample. And that interaction volume will be sort of like a drop looking shape. And the, depending on what kind of interactions the electrons uh, do, the diff, uh, they do that at different regions in this uh, drop. So for example, the, most of the secondary electrons is produced in the upper topmost layer of this. Then beneath that layer you will have a big region where you have backscattering electrons. That's the high energetic electrons that are reflected back due to the beam. And these go sort of directly in the opposite direction upwards. And the final bottom layer of this drop that will create the case characteristics X-rays of the sample. So if you have a detector of that, that then the X-rays will come from that region. So it's important to know that it will be from the bottom layer of this interaction. If you're looking for surface features with the X-rays, then you need to drop the accelerating voltage to make this drop smaller. And how big is this drop then? Well, this top layer that you can say is between 5 and, and 50 nanometer in, in, in depth. So it's an outermost surface of it. And uh, this, this uh, the size span is depending on the accelerating voltage and the material. Uh, the backscattering electrons that go, comes from this uh, middle section and that's down to almost uh, half a micrometer. Beneath that no electrons will penetrate if you don't have an extreme system. And beneath half micrometer you will have x-rays. As I told you that this drop shape, the volume interaction of the sample is dependent on the accelerating voltage. And in general you can just describe it as this, that if you have a low accelerating voltage then the drop form will be small in volume. If you have a high accelerating voltage then the drop shape will be big. So we here I have made a picture about three different sites where the beam interacts with the sample. And you can see here if the, this volume of interaction is close to a corner, electrons will escape more easily because it's more close to, to more edges. So it has more surfaces around it that they can penetrate out from. And that is if you compare to the midsection here. Electrons can only go in the upwards direction here. So less electrons will be emitted from that region. And if you take the third example here, this uh, sharp pike here in the, in the surface, then the electrons can go out in all kinds of directions. And that will give an um, even higher contrast than in the first example. And when more electrons escape, that means that you will get a higher signal count in the detector. And that will in the end appear as a more whiter pixel in the image. And that's why in the secondary electron images of the, of the microscope, you can see that the edges is sort of have a contrast enhancing effect. And the more sharp the edges are, the, the more white the edges will look like. But if you have a high accelerating voltage, then you will also have a high uh, big interacting volume in the sample. And that can uh, reduce the resolution because you can't see the small uh, uh, details in the sample. And that is sort of contradictory to what I said in the first lecture. Because uh, there we define that uh, the brightness were depending on the accelerating voltage. And if you just increase the accelerating voltage, then you will optimize it and give it better resolution. So here you see the give and take situation. Theoretically, high voltage is good from the gun viewpoint, but in the sample interaction viewpoint, that might actually be the bad. 
So you need to take this is a give and take situation, so you need to optimize this depending on the sample. So the next thing I will say in this uh, second lecture is that uh, you know that uh, we create digital images. I said that several times we, we scan the surface just like this old cathode ray television tubes line by line and pixel by pixel. So now I will draw a schematics around that. So here I draw an image and uh, this image contains several lines. It's, it's not the megapixel this uh, example but uh, can it be a 30 pixel image? I don't know. And each line has uh, pixels, right? Like so. Now I, I can draw with the, with the blue pen here, but when the beam scans, it's, it starts at one position up, up here in the top. Then it goes to each line like this and scans. Uh, and thereby it maps off pixel by pixel. Uh, and what you can see here is that the, the beam jumps in discrete values. I mean, here you have a, have a shift in beam position, right? So you, you don't scan uh, everywhere continuously. So you, you do a line by line with a special spacing between. And, and that also means that when you scan a pixel by pixel, you will spend a specific amount of time in, in sort of discrete values in each pixel. And here comes the problem. So this will be the complex problem that uh, you will need uh, to think about. Let's say that the beam is uh, very tiny, like this little dot I draw in the center here. That means that the information that you get from the surface only comes from where the, where the beam actually hits the sample, right? So if this small beam scans here to the right, and if, and if you have, I draw that in red here, uh, a small ob object, this star, that you want uh, to characterize, then you can see, obviously, in my image that I draw here, that the, the beam will miss the star. And the result of that is that uh, you, you will not see the star. It will be invisible. So how do you do if you want to scan and with higher resolution? Yeah, you can increase the pixel density of the image. If you do that, then you scan with greater detail and then you find the star, right? The next thing you can do is uh, you can uh, increase the beam, uh, the spot size. So here I draw another blue dot. This dot is uh, very big. So this is a big beam. If I scan with that beam, and uh, I draw a nine, another star here. Uh, I can make that the green, for example. When the beam passes over that star, uh, it gets some information from the star. But it also gets the information from uh, everything else around the star as well, because the beam spot size is bigger than the, than the thing that we're going to scan, the star. So here is the, the complex problem for you to investigate. If you have a specific uh, raster image profile like this, you have a de defined image uh, resolution that you have. Let's say uh, 1024 uh, by 4, 678 pixels, that's sort of standard. If you have that kind of, of digital image, that these discrete values that you scan and map from the surface, what is the optimum size of the spot size? in order to maximize the resolution that you can achieve with that digital image setup. You need to describe this, of course, in, uh, in uh, the magnification of the sample, so you need to transform the pixels into real physical uh, length values and so on, and, and then you can get some optimized beam size for this. You can also the, discuss the question if uh, the beam size is overlapping each scan or underlapping as in my examples here and uh, discuss the outcome of that. And uh, the, the final thing to think about and discuss in this, uh, and that's the, perhaps the most complex part of this, is how do you know exactly how big the spot size is? 
I mean, we, in lecture one, I talked about that uh, uh, several parameters control the spot size, but how do we actually know what is the size of the spot size? I mean, in, in, in this uh, complex problem, it's obvious that it's rather important to know that. This is an open question and I'd like you to discuss this and what you think about it and the outcome of that. Post that in the, in the regular procedure as uh, given below. Good luck and see you on the next chapter.